approach that Pencil Promise uses is unique in that we don't consider ourselves a nonprofit. We're a nonprofit by tax status, we're a 501c3, but I just don't like that term. I don't think it does uh, an appropriate service to the interest and the meaning and the impact of the work. And so instead of nonprofit, I like to use the term for purpose. And when I think about what that means, it, it actually takes the best of for profit business acumen and it meshes it with a humanitarian mission. And in doing so, we hold ourselves accountable to results above all else. The mantras uh, were phrases that I've always personally written or come up with or used. I, I've used mantras throughout my life. Um, I just find that it's very helpful to have one kind of guiding truth. Um, and oftentimes you can capture that in five to 10 words. Uh, and so whether that is um, post-college for me, it was tourist see, traveler seek. Then there was never take no from someone who can't say yes. Then there was big dreams start with small and reasonable acts. Then speak the language of the person you seek to become. And eventually I just thought, why don't I collect all these together and put them in one book? So the best thing I could reference for turning a, a story about an individual into a movement is one of the later mantras of, of the book, which is listen to your echoes. And so ultimately, I think a lot of leaders, they believe that they have to carry the message forward, that it's their voice that eventually uh, enables the idea to succeed. But the truth is, it's actually not your voice, it's the echo of your voice. It's others taking that original message and making it their unique message, and then when you hear it back, that's proof that it's succeeding. There's a lot of people that have extraordinary stories kind of latently waiting within them, and I feel like my job is to unlock that, and the organization's job is to allow them to channel that into positive impact. My biggest fear is that the organization will become stagnant, uh, that we'll find that we're really good at something, and that we're successful at it, and so we'll keep doing it. Uh, and I think that that's the downfall of a lot of originally great companies and organizations is uh, they're not adapting to the environment as it shifts around them. And so my biggest fear always is um, that we are not kind of living at the leading edge of innovation and that ultimately we have to kind of operate within a state of risk and be comfortable with that and understand that there's a very, very high chance of failure when you take on anything new. But if we're not always operating with a high chance of failure, then we're not taking on something great. Some of the toughest challenges that I've faced have been getting people to believe that our vision was going to work. Um, you know, you just hear no so much more than you hear yes, especially in the early days. And you know, now fortunately, because the organization's grown and it's starting to get um, decently known, uh, we walk into rooms and now people are excited to work with us. But for years, that was not the case. And so that was a huge challenge, was kind of pouring your heart and soul into a meeting for an hour and then having the other person walk away saying, yeah, this is really great, and then doing nothing. Um, and you just have to kind of get over the the emotional battle of you pouring your energy into an idea that not every person is going to be necessarily believe in. And in fact, most don't, otherwise they would join you. But you just have to keep pushing through. And so I think that resilience is, is ultimately one of the biggest challenges for any entrepreneur. I, I try and set goals that frankly scare me um, because I'm probably gonna fail if I pursue them and that means that I, they're worth pursuing. And so it started with trying to build one school, then I moved it up to 10 schools, then 100 schools, then doing 100 schools just in one year, and we did that last year. Um, now the big goals have actually started to not only incorporate big uh, kind of school count and um, training 1,000 teachers, putting 10,000 kids in our scholarship program, but uh, I, I want to move almost into an entirely new space, which is what does the future of education look like? Um, how are we going to educate kids going forward? And I think Pencils of Promise is uniquely positioned to start to figure that out because now we have hundreds of schools around the world where we can test out what the future of education looks like. And we can pilot innovation and see, do things like e-readers or um, 3D printers that produce literacy toolkits. You know, we're excited about it in culture, but is the data behind it to prove that it works? And so that's the next thing that I'm excited about is really trying to figure out what type of ideas and new teaching methods and new technologies uh, can truly unlock the promise of a child.